the season of Advent is what we've been approaching this year as a putting together of a puzzle, the season of waiting, we are almost there. We, have, we began the month talking about uh, do the pieces fit together? Are there any mismatched pieces? Last week we looked at how uh, the pieces of the same color were the hardest to fit in. And, and now there's only a bit left. We're almost there. And, and the question becomes, what do you see? What do you see as the final picture? comes together. Now obviously you see what's on the, bo on the front of the box. We know the picture, but uh, if someone walked up to you and asked, well, what's the picture we're seeing here, you'd have to answer, well, what is it? For example, let's say you're putting together this puzzle. I drew it myself. You can be tell me how impressive it is afterwards. It's on the front of your bulletin as well. But if you were putting together this little simple puzzle, stick dude and some stairs, what would you tell someone if they asked, what is this a picture of? What's happening here? Now, not a rhetorical question, seriously, what do you say? Man's going downstairs. Man's going down the stairs. How do you know he's not going up the stairs? He could be going up the stairs, right? Or how do you know it's a dude? How, how do you know, I mean, it is amazing art. Is it a woman? Is he, we, we don't know. Uh, when you, two people can look at something, it's probably a dude, true. But uh, two people can look at the same thing some people are going to see someone going up the stairs. Some people are going to see people going down the stairs. It depends upon, upon what you see, what's going on. That's, what happen, that's what's happening as we look at the scriptures today, as we look at the Psalms. For example, the people in uh, Judah, the southern nation of Judah, are conf they're having to decide what they see. They're obviously having a moment of anger and confusion at the point at which you're praying for some children to have their be heads bashed against some stones. I mean, that, that's, that's rough. It's the Psalms, right? It's, it's, they're honest, if nothing else. But there's this question in the Psalm, how can they sing the songs of Zion when this has happened? What do they see as their future? Why, why is it so hard for them to even think about this? A little historical background is necessary. What, what they're seeing is, is the southern nation of Judah. Remember Israel as the 12 tribes of Israel had been split into the northern 10 tribes and the southern 2 tribes. The southern 2 tribes have gone into exile and it's the year 586. Back in 721, 140 odd years ago, before that, uh, they had watched the northern ten tribes get destroyed by the Assyrian Empire. They had watched how the Assyrians had invaded and, and, and destroyed that nation and then started to send their own people in to, to marry with the local folks. And so what had happened is uh, the northern ten tribes had become sort of interbred. They, they were seen as half-breeds. Yes, it sounds racist because it, it was. And um, so the descendants of those ten tribes are what in Jesus' day will be called the Samaritans and, and looked down upon. And, and so these two, the two tribes that were left in, in Judah, uh, when they go into exile 140 years later, their great, 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 probably great grandparents had told them about how those ten tribes had been destroyed. And now here are the two tribes, and they've gone into exile, and they're looking at their future, and they could very well see that they are just as doomed as, as the other ten tribes were. That's what they could see. They could see that they were doomed, God had forsaken them, and they were goners. Right? That's one thing they could see with all the pieces coming together. The other thing they could see was what the prophet Jeremiah had told them about that God had gone with them into this exile, that they should seek the good of the city in which they were going to live, that something good was going to come of this. They could see that just like the, the Hebrew people when they'd gone to Mount Sinai and received God's word and then studied it for 40 years before going into the promised land, they could see this as another interlude like that, another time of discipline before going back to the promised land. Right? So those are the two ways that they could see what was before them. It didn't change the facts on the ground. Two tribes of, of Israel, the southern nation of Judah, had gone into exile, and they don't know what's next. But the way they understood the situation, has God forsaken them and they're goners? Or is God disciplining them and they have a future? How they see the situation changes what happens next drastically. Right? This is the same type of... A decision that we see going on in the gospel this day, this, this decision about what to see and how it's an amazingly important decision. Because in the gospel we see Mary hurrying off to see Elizabeth. 
And, and I think we, heard, we, we quickly move past, we have a, right before this, the angel shows up to Mary and says, hey, you're having a kid. And Mary says, ah, let it be with me as you say. And then we, we skip, it's easy to fast forward then to Elizabeth singing this song, yay! But uh, this middle part right here, this, this, verse, this verse 39, it tells us a lot. Because it says, Mary got ready and hurried to go see Elizabeth. So, let's think about this for a minute. You find out you're pregnant. Who's the first person you call? Your mom, right? Why didn't Mary go tell her mom? Why didn't she go see Elizabeth first? What's that tell you about her and her mama? Think there might be some tension there, right? For her not to go tell her mama first. A little bit of social tension, too. This is a culture in which if you uh, are caught committing adultery as a woman, you get stoned. It, remember Jesus, he, when he, he is presented with this woman who has committed adultery, and, and he says to all the people, let he who is without sin throw the first stone. Those weren't metaphysical stones. Those aren't like pretend stones. Those are real stones. It makes me wonder if maybe he's thinking of his mama in that moment. But so he, she doesn't go see her, her Mary doesn't go see her mom. She's going to go somewhere else. And she has to get ready to go see Elizabeth. How far do you have to go before you get ready? Right, how far of a trip? You, do you get ready to go to Green City? No, you just kind of jump in the car, car and go, right? Do you get ready to go to Kirksville? No, you, I get ready if I'm going to go to like Macon overnight. If I'm going to travel for a couple hours, I get ready. Anything short of Macon is just kind of, hey, I don't know. Here, off we go. Right? So she gets ready. And she's going to take a trip as a young teenage woman in the first century Roman Empire. That's usually called stupid. I mean, I could sugarcoat it, uh, uh, lacking in judgment, but that's just usually not considered a good idea. And so she's going to hurry to go see her cousin Elizabeth. And, and she's going to show up, and, and she's in a hurry, she's frazzled, she gets there, and she walks in the door. And what does Elizabeth see? All right, that's the question. What does Elizabeth see? Well, she sees a frazzled, tired teen who's pregnant. But what does she see? Right? Does she see, if someone walks in the door and it's a tired, uh, frazzled woman who's pregnant, shows up by herself, has traveled a long distance, are you worried? Are you scared for her? Are you concerned? Are you thinking about, you know, I hear stories about people who, like, they go off for, for nine months and then and go off to their aunts and then come back and not say what happened? I mean, is that what she's showing up to do because she has to hide the fact that she's about to have a kid? Is that what Elizabeth sees? Or does she see a blessing? Does she see the future mother of God? Does she see that this is something amazing and, and powerful, that this is God's will? Right? This is an amazing moment. Because Elizabeth has to choose what she sees. Now, she does have some help. John the Baptist, in, in utero, you might say, gives a kick. Oh, I don't recognize this. And she does have some assistance. But Elizabeth sees a woman who is about to give, who's going to give birth to, a wonderful, to uh, this wonderful thing, the Son of God, and, and she will be called blessed forever. That she will be forever remembered for her willingness to say yes. But Elizabeth has, has this moment when Mary walks in the door. She has to decide what she sees. Right. The question I'd have for you as we go through, come to the end of Advent is what do you see? I mean, we can all agree upon facts, right? But if you were sitting by the river of, Zion, uh, river of Babylon and you, you were in exile and, and things, you were in a faraway place, far from the home you love, would you be able to see divine discipline and hope? Or would you be the one talking about bashing babies' heads against the wall in anger and fear, right? If a pregnant woman shows up at your door, are you seeing the fear and the consequences and the lack of insurance and the danger and her life is ruined, blah, 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 blah? Or do you see the gift of a child? What do you see? Right? When something, we're, this is in the time of Advent, and, and we're waiting, and when something happens, the, type, the question is, what, do we, will we be able to see what is happening? Will we, will we be able to see accurately, to see what is a problem, what is a blessing, what is a distraction, what is holy? And I think that what you see is determined by how mature you are in the faith, how mature we are in the faith. Because th this is the, the question, uh, when Paul talks about going from spiritual milk to spiritual uh, meat, to steak, I mean, that's part of growing up. You have to grow up so you can see more fully what God intends for you to see. And, and I think we, we've all had this experience when it comes to raising children, right? 
Let's say, for example, that a three-year-old runs from her dad last night <laughs> near the road. And that dad had said, you can watch the Charlie Brown Christmas when we get home. And let's say that dad has to chase down that kid yelling, stop, and the kid doesn't listen. Kid cries all the way home, gets home, and now we're not going to watch Charlie Brown Christmas because you didn't listen. What's that kid say to her dad? You let me down. That's what she said. You let me down. All right. What do you see there? Do you see, like the three-year-old sees, that, that the dad is a mean dad and, and, he, and he had given his word and now he wasn't going to follow through? Or do you see something different? Do you see something different, right? You see discipline. Why do you see discipline instead of a dad who gave his word and let his kid down? Because you've grown up a bit, right? right? That's what I'm talking about in our faith. We're never done growing in our faith. The question, what do you see, is a question that is determined by how grown up, how mature we are in our faith. Two people can look at the exact same situation and see things very, very differently. Some, pe some people will see a problem in, in something that's horrible and something that's irredeemable, and other people will see that this is a place for the power of God to be shown. And it depends upon how mature our faith is. I think that's what we're praying every time we sing that hymn, Be Thou My Vision, O Lord of My Heart. Be all else but not to me, say that Thou art. Thou my best thought, in day and by night, both waking and see see sleeping, Thy presence my light. That, that prayer, Be Thou My Vision, Be Thou My Best Thought, because when we're lining up what we're thinking with what God is thinking, what we're seeing with what God's seeing, we're seeing what by God's light. That is when we're seeing what is most true was most hopeful, was most good. My prayer for you as we go through these last days of Advent, as Christmas is just, just around the corner, is that would God would be thou your vision, so that as you look around, you would see as God sees. You would not see despair, you'd see discipline. You would not see hopelessness, but you'd see hope, you'd see possibility, you'd see potentials for what God can and will do in our lives, in our communities, and in our world. Amen.